Right, Teleado Chamsa, and AMD have announced new GPUs. Wolf, did they nail or did they fail? Yeah, nah, I've got some stuff to tell you about this launch. Some good, some bad and ugly. I've got to kick them in the nuts because, hey, December what? The 12th or 13th? Come on. Why are you announcing this crap now and making people wait a month? That's poor form there, AMD. People have been waiting for this announcement, then they've got to wait another month? Come on! That's just not cricket. Anyway, what should we start with? The good or the bad? Let's start with the good. The good, the price. Woof. $1,000 for the good one, the top G1. XTX. That's a good price if the performance is there. And make sure you subscribe because I will be benchmarking compared to their benchmarks, their advertised benchmarks on their website, 4K Ultra Settings, as you can see right here, right now. You're watching Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, 4K Ultra Settings, AMD said 139 frames per second. Now, I don't know where they benchmarked it. Was it the campaign? Was it multiplayer? But I can tell you now, this 4090, that's around the mark, right? That's the sort of FPS I'm getting with this RTX 4090, which is the tough version, which does have a slight overclock. But in campaign, that's the sort of FPS I'm getting. And in multiplayer, a little bit less at that sort of 4K. It would depend on the map. I don't know where they tested it, but 4K Ultra Settings or max settings like they say, pretty much the same as a 4090 if their claims are true. Same with God of War 2, they're claiming 98 frames per second. RTX 4090 at 4K, I can tell you now, stay tuned for that video tomorrow, you'll see. It's around that sort of mark with the 4090 at max settings too, right? So again, cherry picked, but if those performance metrics are right, it's with a 4090 at least in that cherry pick sample there. But given they didn't compare it to the 4090 and how much cheaper it is, makes me feel this is a little bit sus. Maybe they don't have the performance. But yeah, nah, maybe they're just playing possum and just bluffing us and they'll come out and it will be, yeah, look, 4090 performance for $1,000. But I suspect it's the former there. Given that AMD usually price their products where they think they sort of sit in performance scale compared to other products. But you got to remember, it's a lot cheaper for AMD to, you know, produce these sort of chiplet designs, especially when they're not giving us the fastest, best memory as well. So maybe they can just undercut. Who knows? Also, I love the interface on these cards. USB-C, DisplayPort 2.1, Wolf. That is the only way to fly. And I think NVIDIA, are, you know, taking us from behind, giving us the old Jolly Roger with, you know, giving us DisplayPort 1.4 because new monitors at CES are coming out with DisplayPort 2.1. I know that for a fact. So having DisplayPort 1.4, that sucks. And USB-C is awesome because I want to see if I can plug an XDR display, an Apple XDR display into one of these, you know, Radeon GPUs because that is game changing, being able to do the one cable straight into a Pro XDR Apple display and walk that's the way to go and yeah that's just a nice clean setup but i think most people are gamers they're never going to use that be interested to see if the partners include it on their designs as well so that's about all the good actually the performance per watt that's a good thing considering the energy crisis now i mean you can't complain about it can you but i think people that afford this sort of price of graphics card i don't know are they skimping on their power you tell me down there in the comments they also promise to do great stuff with their software please come on that's where they need to lift their game a bit in the software department also one thing bad about amd is a lot of stuff they have is not supported like the media engines on the ryzen cpus not supported in adobe the new media engines on these GPUs, the AV1 and all this, it sounds good, right? But if it's not supported in OBS or Premiere or whatever software I'm going to be using, what's the point of it, right? It's good that it's there, but they need to go to developers and help them implement it into their software because otherwise it's just useless. I will say, yeah, all right, the price is okay considering inflation, etc. You got to remember it's a lot cheaper with chiplet design and they're not using GDDR6X, they're just using normal 6. So they are doing something some cost savings there and we know on the software side they're not as good as nvidia as of today with fixing stuff and updating their drivers and implementing stuff into you know other people's software and that nvidia are really good with that yeah we'll have to wait and see here stay tuned for my benchmarks tomorrow i'll catch you in the next one guys tally ho